You're saying that the English girls like Vikings because they washed every Saturday? Yeah. Oh, hello. Being taken back in time. Believe it or not, that enormous turd, about this long and about that wide, was just found on the side of the street. Here we go. Look at this. That is amazing. Oh, the grand old Duke of York. He had 10,000 men. No. Welcome all to another episode of A Day in the UK. And today, we are in, you guessed it, the vibrant Christmassy city of York, not far from the North York Moors as well. And I'll tell you what, it's full of energy today. Okay, so this ancient cathedral city has very strong Roman and Viking roots. But today, we're gonna check out the Viking roots. I'm proper excited about this. I don't know how much you know about the Vikings. I don't know too much. I saw a series recently, but it made me wanna delve a little bit more into that. So let's get to the Jorvik Center first, the York, Jorvik Viking Center, and get stuck in. Let's do it. Okay, I've arrived at the Jorvik Viking Center here in York, and here we got Zuri. Hello. So you're an actual Viking? Mm, I relive the life of a Viking who lived here in the 10th century based on the archaeology of the site. Oh, I see a, a Viking, as probably a lot of people do, mm. as a warrior, someone to be feared, um, someone that drinks from one of those long horns. But no, the <laughs> word Viking means raider. Okay, okay. But because it's in culture today that we all call them Vikings. Okay. That's why they're labelled the Vikings. It goes along side by side by, with the horned helmet. Oh, I see, yeah. No evidence for horned helmets whatsoever. Right. But anybody who's, who, who's told, draw a picture of a Viking, they put horns on the helmet. Oh, right. And There's no evidence for horned no. helmets. No. Where did that come from then? Um, stage designers in Germany and in England right. were trying to make a, uh, uh, <laughs> an image of people who were not nice people. They were raiders and stealers and do oh, all I see. And speak awful cool things. They are not Christians and therefore they're devil like. Put two and two together and come up with a horned helmet. Some of them came over to raid, and those that came over to raid were usually young adults, bearing in mind that you become an adult at roughly the age of 12 in Viking culture. No way! Yeah. 12 years of age, uh, they come over and they raid the monasteries because the, ga the guys in the monasteries, although they're lovely, beautiful Christians, yeah. they don't carry any weapons and they put their hands together and pray when they're confronted by a big hairy Viking. It doesn't right. really work. No, no. Yes, they did come over and raiding, eventually culminating in the great heathen army that comes over, captures York in 866, loses it, captures it again in 867, 8, dates are slightly skewy. Yeah. Um, and they take over York. Right. We do know, quite an amusing fact, is that the English girls like the Vikings because they washed every Saturday. And that's written <laughs> in a 10th century document. Are you serious? Yeah. You're saying that the English girls like Vikings because they washed every Saturday yeah. and so none of the other warriors did? Um, Anglo-Saxons are Christians. Christians are t taught that pride is a sin. If you wash yourself regularly, right. it's really difficult to wash in that period. You've got to boil lots of water, so you wash your face, you wash your hands, you might wash your feet, you brush your clothes down. But everybody would smell the same, but the Vikings are known for their washing every Saturday. Right. So there you go. We had an idea of filthy heathen Vikings, but that's that's what that's part of the attraction. I would have thought to you, ladies, but no, actually they were quite clean. And they probably cleaner there. than me. But I really, really appreciate this. Thank you so much. You're Thank you. Well, Cheers then. Bye. Are you a Viking? <laughs> no, I'm not Viking. Right. You're not. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? Huh? How do you know? In Brazil have Vikings? No. That's a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. <laughs> Are you a Viking? Huh? No? Viking. No. <laughs> but when you finish it, you are. I am. You are. You look like a Viking. Yes. Have you got a sword behind your back? Yes. <laughs> yeah, be, better be careful. <laughs> this man's going to be a warrior, I'm telling you. Notice the cool little man. Because she was saying Vikings are men at the age of 12. Do you know that? How old are you? How what age? Runs on stage. Uh, 12. You're 12? So you would be a man in Viking times. How about that? Yeah. Amazing. Listen, you, you guys enjoy the trip in here, yeah? Thank See you later. Ta -da. What about that? So we're entering the Jorvik Center. And we'll just walk around and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be awesome. The Jorvik Center began its life as an enormous archaeological excavation which happened between 1976 and 1981. 
Now what you're looking at underneath the glass is a reconstruction of what that Viking street looked like when it was uncovered. The Coppergate excavations produced over 20,000 individually interesting objects, as well as 12 tonnes of soil samples, 230,000 pieces of pottery and 45 tonnes of animal bone. Archaeologists discovered the construction and layout of buildings in which townsfolk lived and worked, how the people of Jorvik made a living by making and selling goods, what the people of Jorvik ate, and even how they spent their time. Right, so the next stage is we're going to go on a ride, and um, I'm looking forward to this because it's an immersive experience and it includes smells from that particular period of time during the Viking era. So, um, yeah, let's see how it is. I'm looking forward to this. Get you up here, sir. Thank you very much. Find the back of your head on that headrest there for me, okay? Right, okay. Language there, and then you're all set. Thank you. And okay, so choose your language. It's definitely that. Okay. Oh, well, hello. Being taken back in time. So the Viking streets we're about to enter are an adaption from the archaeologists back in the 1970s, pretty much recreating what they found. Now you might be surprised to hear that Vikings kept themselves well groomed. This man is making combs from antlers. Antler combs were highly prized as antler is stronger under strain than bone. Combs were riveted together and decorated. These incredible antler combs were found on the dig. But it wasn't just combs that were found, tweezers and ear scoops were also found on the dig. Amazing. By the 10th century, Jorvik was a thriving city with a flourishing manufacturing centre and wide trading links. Established by the Romans, York is only 37 miles or 60 kilometres from the Humber estuary linked by the river Ouse to the North Sea. This inland port had long-standing links to Europe and so was a significant conquest for the Vikings from Scandinavia. The excavations at Coppergate showed that during the Viking period, York was transformed in size, culture and appearance, becoming a centre of economic importance. And by AD 1066, 15,000 or more people lived in Jorvik, making it England's second city. Check out these characters playing the Viking board game Never Tapple. Um, it's a medieval Viking game and one of history's greatest board games for two players. And boards and pieces have been found within warrior burials at religious sites and even boat burials as well. Now, Never Tapple means the king's table in Old Norse. And it's kind of like an old Viking version of chess. Right, this is interesting. Check out the fisherman gutting the fish. Look at his face. It was forensically reconstructed from a real skull found at the dig. And the amazing thing about these characters on the ride is that most of them are reconstructed from the skulls of real people, including the archaeologists who were on the dig and even museum staff. The first Vikings who settled in Jorvik were not Christian but they seem to have adopted Christianity quite quickly. During the 10th century, the people of Jorvik, whether Scandinavian or English, had developed a new Anglo-Scandinavian culture that combined both traditions. Check out this man making leather shoes. Shoemakers and shoe repairers plied their trade at Coppergate, and there's evidence that leather boots and shoes were made and repaired together with belts, straps, pouches, thongs, and elaborately decorated sheaths and scabbards. Now notice his hand, he's suffering Viking's disease or Celtic hand, Dupuytren's contracture, which is characterized by thickening of tissues in the palm. So here's another example of forensic reconstruction. This older lady crossing the road was reconstructed by a skeleton found on the dig and she had a hip problem, hence her labored walk across the street. Check out this Viking having a poo in an outdoor toilet. Look at the expression on his face. Now, this absolutely massive human poo 
was found at the dig. I mean, look at the way it's presented. Will you ever see a poo presented in this way ever again? But you'll be pleased to hear it contains eggs of whipworm, more worm, and cereal bran. Lovely. Really amazing, like amazing. Well, I've got to say, that without doubt is the best museum slash themed ride into the Viking era. Not that I've ever been to a Viking themed era museum since the first time, but absolutely terrific. But I've got a right character here, hello mate. Hello, how are we going? Right. Yeah, very good, thanks mate. I heard you in there, You're, he's, this guy is proper, what's your name sir, bro? Hayden, nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you mate, very, very no knowledgeable. You said something about, that's a reconstruction in there of the streets yeah, absolutely. that was found. So, is that right? Um, this site we're in, this area, this uh, this shopping arcade, was yeah. constructed on the site of an old Victorian sweets factory that was demolished in the uh, the early 1970s, late 1960s. Okay. And when the archaeologists who were working on this site dug down just to do a couple of little excavations to make sure there was nothing interesting here before the city council developed over the site, yeah. they accidentally stumbled across the best preserved Viking Age urban settlement found anywhere in the whole world. I want to ask you about the turd that was found. Oh, the enormous poo, yeah, absolutely. Like that, is, that is some log, isn't it? It is quite a spectacular one. <laughs> What's particularly interesting about that particular turd is that we didn't actually find it in one of the toilet pits we excavated. Here. Yeah. Uh, we found quite a few toilet pits here, and the preservation was so good, apparently the contents still smelled terrible when they dug them up. You're joking! Yeah, the preservation was that good, or in fact that bad. But how is it preserved that um, well? Because of the because of the water logging on the site. When you're underwater, there's no air, no oxygen, no respiration. Right, which right. Means no microorganisms, so right. uh, organic remains don't decay. But this wasn't found in one of those toilet pits. Believe it or not, that enormous turd, about this long and about that wide, was just found on the side of the street. So when a Viking needed to go, he really needed he to just, go. He just basically logged off on one of the streets. It seems like, from what we found, yeah, absolutely. Not particularly <laughs> well, when you need to go. <laughs> but, uh, absolutely terrific, terrific knowledge as well. Yeah. Loved oh, it, mate. Horrible. I'm glad you think so. Thank you so much, time. mate. Thank nice you. To meet you. Cheers, bud. See you you too. to be one didn't there in the Christmas market a Viking drinking horn place place stall hello lovely you right all right is this your stall no it's not my stall it's not your stall but I'm working for somebody have you got but to work for this place you have to have some sort of affinity with drinking Viking drinking horns yeah not necessarily no <laughs> Like them, sell them. Have you got one? Do you drink from it? Uh, I do have a little one at home, but I haven't drank out of it. My husband's drank out of it. Has he? Yeah. <laughs> is uh, it your husband who runs this, or is no, it? No, it's not. Tell me about these then. Um, I mean, are these is this kind of authentic? I mean, they're beautiful. Yeah, as far as I know, they're authentic. You know, I mean, people have been drinking out of these vessels for about two thousand years. So two thousand years. And what do they, can you show me a few then? What do they, what would they typically use and what animal tusks or horns would they That's use? A cow horn. That's a cow horn, yeah? Yeah, so they'll take out the cartilage. Okay. And then they'll, they, they'll buff it up and then, then they'll uh, vanish it so it's to drink out. That's the that's the modern way. They would the mo the modern way is that they buff it up. Yeah, I mean originally they would have just like buried it in the ground. Yeah. And let the cartilage rot out. Right. And then they take it out and then they probably dip it in bees running beeswax. Okay. Inside so coat it. Okay. And put the bottom so it can make it more hygienic. You're joking. So, so they'd bury it in the ground? Yeah. And what would that do? It would rot the cartilage out from the inside of the bomb. It would rot the cartilage out yeah. and then they'd, then they'd use beeswax, you say beeswax yeah. or something like that, to stop it from leaking. Wow. So you've got a few here, you've got, um, what ones, what about this here? This, what one's this? Buffalo. Yeah. So, yeah, buffalo and black ones 
yeah. the black ones are buffalo what other different types have you got then uh, just the long horn cattle the long horn cattle ah is that which ones are they then these these are all these ones these are all long horn cattle yeah. well they're absolutely stunning thank you very much You're beautiful cheers then Bye. right we're down little stonegate street and there's a reason for that because we're going to a shop called Asgard. It's right in front of me. So let's check it out. It's a proper Viking shop. Let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so I'm in Asgard and it's a proper Viking shop. The gentleman doesn't want to be filmed. Um, the owner isn't here, but he's got some great information for me about the owner, haven't you, mate? Uh, yeah, so um, the owner, Jim Glazard, he studies uh, Viking uh, jewellery basically. Yeah. So it's experimental archaeology. So through that he's he studies with uh, non ferrous metal working in the Viking Age period. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, so that's all your sort of silver, bronze, gold plate, pewter, um, jewellery. Is he making it then in the same way that the Vikings would have made it? Is he going through the same process to do it? Uh, so yeah, so through, through the um, through his degree of uh, experimental archaeology, yeah. Uh, so he's uh, using the originals as a basis. He's uh, quite high up in the museum standings, so he's um, let's say quite high up in the standings. He's been able to handle the genuine articles, and from that, um, from his assumptions, tried to figure out how they've been made, created a toolkit. From that toolkit, he's then created a master copy to then be able to reproduce them. <laughs> so I had no idea the significance of this shop or Jim and his skills, but you were saying that the jewellery was used in the series Vikings and what was the uh, other series? Last Kingdom. And The Last Kingdom. By the way, amazing series. You've got to watch both of them. I prefer The Last Kingdom to Vikings. Both were incredible anyway. Uh, so this particular one was in, um, in Vikings. Yeah. Uh, so from about season two onwards, you'll okay. see uh, Ragnar Lothbrok, Bjorn Ironside, okay. uh, Rolo uh, wearing one of these arm rings. Amazing. But I've uh, put this one out for you. Uh, so that's the uh, the actual archaeological reproduction. That's uh, the archaeological reproduction. What does that mean? Uh, so we've the one that they use for the show. Yeah. That's um, inspired from a find. Gotcha. Which is next to it. So, so you say that's the proper archaeological copy? Yeah. Incredible, mate. Isn't that fascinating. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. How interesting was that? Right, I'm starving, so I'm off to a proper Viking place called Valhalla. Looking forward to this. I'll see you there. Let's do it. Hello mate, so we're in Valhalla, right? Valhalla. Not the actual Valhalla. Not, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> what is, uh, so what's your name first of all? Liam. Liam, Adam, very nice to meet mate, very, very nice. nice, that's a proper handshake, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a proper handshake. <laughs> in Norse mythology, Valhalla from Old Norse or Hall of the Slain is a majestic enormous hall located in Asgard and ruled over by the god Odin. Half of those who die in combat travel to Valhalla upon death, led by Valkyries to be with Odin, while the other half gets chosen by the goddess Freya for the field Folkvangir. 
In Valhalla, the dead warriors join the masses of those who have died in combat and various legendary Germanic heroes and kings as they prepare to aid Odin during the events of Ragnarok. I've got to ask you, are you a Viking? I mean, I, don't, I, can, I can't pull it off, can I? I can't pull it off, I wish I could, I can't pull it off, no. I don't getting... know mate, I don't know, I think we're you get... probably can, you got the beard, you got the beard. We've got, we've got well, it's been great deep down. But we've got, it's like, we've got loads of people who come here every year who are ten times the Viking I am, you know, bring their own horns in that you can drink. You're joking! Out. You know, but horn drinks, we've got loads of mead down there on there. We serve, you know, eight different types of mead at the minute, which is, and it flies out and it finds out. Um, and it, it's it's wild right now because you get you know Viking festival comes up in February and yeah. this building is just rammed full of Vikings. Literally, full of Vikings. yeah, people dress up as Vikings on their horns in there. But they properly yeah. identify as properly Vikings. Properly identify as Vikings. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Really, really nice to meet you. Right, no problem, Brilliant pal. stuff. Thank right, you very much. Enjoy the food. Cheers, bud. Thank you. Right, let's check this menu out, shall we? Okay, what they got? So they have got bar snacks and sides, and you have got these meat cheese meat and cheese platter boards as well. Look at this, the Odin, the Sif. The Thor and the mini cheese board. Now check this out as well. Look, three for fifteen fifty. That's um, plates or five for twenty five fifty. I'm going to go for the five because I'm a pig, right? I'm just going to go for this larger portions. I'm going to go all five larger portions. <laughs> Hello, fair maiden. Hello. <laughs> Can I have the larger portions, right? Can I go for all five for twenty five fifty? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'll have all them, please. So the meatballs, the chicken wings, the sausages, the halloumi fries, and the ribs. Absolutely. Yeah, is that everything? Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. I've ordered something here as well. What's this? I've ordered a... Golden Eagle Pilsner. It's our local lager from Brew York. Golden Eagle Pilsner. So this is what I'm going for with the meal as well. Thank you very much, lovely. That's You're brilliant. Right. Cheers. Here we go. Look at this. That is amazing. Thank you very much. No worries, enjoy. Smashing, thank you very much, cheers. Guys, look at this, look at this. I'm bringing it into the light because it's nice and moody in here, but I want you to see this luscious food. Check this out, beautiful. Right, we're gonna try the spicy halloumi fries with the lapna dip, like this beetroot dip. Let's try it, okay. Oh, that is lovely. They're not spicy, I can't taste, oh, hang on a minute. There's a tiny twinge of spice in there, but if you're not into spicy food, you can barely taste it. But what's fantastic, this Latina dip, kind of light and moussey to taste. See what? Beautiful. Mm. Right, I'm gonna get a nice bulbous, crispy chicken wing. Let's give it a go, shall we? I've demolished that, so you can tell I pretty much like them. Mm. So good. You know we get sometimes those chicken wings haven't been cooked properly and they're kind of soft and you can have that sort of soft fat that's layered on top, it's disgusting. But this is lovely, really crispy, really dry, crisp and dry chicken wings, beautiful. Mm. Right, you've got to wash it down with the Golden Eagle Pilsner by Brew York. Apparently it's by Brew York, so let's give this a little try. You know what? No, you know what? If we're gonna give Golden Eagle Pilsner a try in Valhalla, it's gotta be in a Viking drinking horn. So let's do it. You can bring your own Viking horns with you. Um, they don't stop them here, but you can bring them with you and you can drink from that if you want. I recommend it. Let's give it a try, shall we? Golden Eagle Pilsner. Oh, it's got this beautiful, rich, malty taste. Drinking out of this is so cool as well. That is delicious, beautiful. So it's time for the spiced pork meatballs in a spicy tomato and herb sauce with Parmesan cheese. I believe that's what it is, right? Let's give it a try, shall we? Mm. That is a proper goer. That is a, I'm not gonna lie, that is a proper goer. That sauce is rich, it's spicy, it's not too spicy, but it works so well with the meatballs. This is juicy, it's soft, the parmesan is absolutely stunning. With that sauce, it just works. It works so well. I'll tell you what, it's my favorite dish so far. Sublime. Mm. Second to last, Yorkshire pork sausages with a maple syrup and mustard glaze with caramelized onions. <sighs> Let's get stuck in, shall we? Right, so we're getting some of the caramelized onions on the sausage. Let's do it. 
It's very tasty. I like a bit of a glaze as well, a sweet glaze with the sausage, because sausage is a strong taste, and with that sweetness, it works really, really well. Um, the mustard glaze has a little tiny kick at the back of your throat, which makes this whole dish work really well. Loved it. Okay, so we've got the smoked baby back ribs with the sticky Valhalla glaze with some sweet roasted peppers. I think they're sweet roasted peppers. Yeah, sweet roasted peppers. Looking forward to this. Let's do it. Let's complete this set of five. Let's do it. Mm. Wow. There's nothing else to say but wow. No, I will say some stuff. Okay, it's like butter. The meat is like butter. It just falls into your mouth. What can I say? You could easily come down here and share this between two people. No sweat whatsoever. There's no way I'm going to eat all this on my own. That, my friends, is a meal fit for a Viking. Skull. Mm. Ladies, take care. Thank you so much. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 Right, that was superb. Great food in Valhalla. Amazing beer as well. This ends my Viking trip here in York. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.